let's start designing our page. The first thing we could add is a nav bar. A nav bar, a navigation bar, allows our users to navigate through the page and generally is on the top of most web pages. Let's do it exactly the same in our page. So that seems to be a sensible option to start with. Uh, generally, it is advisable or it makes a lot of sense to design a page from the top down, also from starting from what the what is really at the top down to the bottom. You don't necessarily have to follow follow this order, but it makes it a lot easier when structuring the page and designing the layout. So let's do that here as well. I'm going to go to the element select section and I'm going to look for the navbar. The navbar is one of the pre-built elements or components available within Netflow, um, within Webflow. So all I have to do is take the navbar and drag and drop it onto the body. And let's preview how that looks like. So this is how the navbar looks like on a computer. And as you can see, as soon as we swap to a mobile or a tablet view, the navbar changes to this hamburger menu. This is referred to as a hamburger menu, these three lines. And clicking on the hamburger menu, we can see the links which were displayed on the desktop screen. The reason for that is that as soon as the screen gets too small or too narrow, it makes from a design perspective more sense to hide these links into the inside the hamburger menu. Now we can go and change these settings for that, I'm going to select the navbar, go to settings, and here you can see menu icon for um, and then tablet or below. We can change that, for example, so that the hamburger menu only appears on a mobile screen. So that on a tablet preview, we still see those links, but as soon as we swap to mobile, the navbar changes to the hamburger menu. Okay, with these changes done, let's start designing our navbar. I'm going to swap back to the desktop and go back into designer. And you can see, let's take a look here at the structure of the navbar. You can see everything is nested inside a container element. A container element is one of those layout elements. Like the these elements here, they are mostly meant for structuring things, container elements in themselves don't contain anything. However, there's one thing special about a container element in that sense that it automatically centers everything on the page. So it, it, it gives everything a bit of margin and uh, removes it from the really from the left and right hand side. Let's take a look again at the preview and you can see those links. They are centered slightly ever so slightly from the right hand margin and that is exactly because they are nested inside the container element. In that sense, container elements are very useful for centering uh, stuff on a page. And it is advisable to keep most of your elements or most of your content on the page within the container element. And that centering adjusts automatically depending on the screen size. So that is handled again by Webflow and we don't re need to worry about the centering in itself ourselves. So the other thing we can see here in this navbar is a brand link. This is basically a link and um, we can nest. This is basically a div block with a link and we can change where the link links to. So we can either set it to link to a web page or in our, our sense, it makes a lot of sense uh, to link it to the home page because what we're next going to do is we're going to put our logo in here and then as soon as the user clicks on the logo he will be redirected to the starting page so let's set the link settings to our home page in order to do that i'm going to select link settings and select the second icon the page icon and here i can choose the pages right now we only have two pages the style guide and the home section and i'm going to select the home section Okay, and now we have a link here, but there's nothing inside that link. Again, if you go to the preview uh, area, we don't see anything here and there's nothing to click on. So we can either add some text in here or a logo. 
why don't we add a logo here? I think that makes a lot of sense. In order to do so, what we have to go is we go to this media section in the elements section and just find the image element and drag and drop it into the div element with the link. And here we can choose an image. Right now we have this one image, which is from one of our previous tutorials. However, um, that is not useful. So let's upload a logo. I already created a logo for this page. In a later video at the end, I'm going to explain you how to create your own logo. But in a moment, let's just go with the logo I already pre-made. And here we have our logo. I'm going to upload that quickly. And there we go. The surf and trade logo is uploaded. Now um, we have our logo up here and now we can click the logo and we get redirected to our page. However, the logo looks way too big. So let's go about and changing that. All right, the logo in itself looks a bit too big for this whole navigation bar. So let's go about changing that. And the best thing to, in order to restrain our logo is not actually change the image settings themselves, but rather change the settings of the, of the container in which that image is nested. So I'm going to select the brand, the logo, uh, the brand link here, and I'm going to ch ch uh, change that class to nav logo link, keep it a bit descriptive and just set the width to 200 pixels. And as soon as I change that, you can see the logo size shrinks quite significantly to 200 pixels. So that logo fits now better. However, it looks very wet squeezed to the top. So let's go changing, go about changing that in the next step. The whole navigation bar looks quite small and the logo looks too big for the navigation bar. It looks very much squeezed to the top. So let's give that navigation bar a bit more breathing room and make it a bit bigger. Now, in order to increase the size of the navigation bar, we can give it some margin. Remember when we talked about margin and padding, we said in order to increase the size of an element, we tend to use margin. So that would be a good use case of margin. I'm going to select the navigation bar and I'm going to give that navigation bar a class name of navbar. And now let's give it some padding. What we could do is we could manually give each of these four padding elements some styling. Alternatively, we can just press shift and thereby style all the elements at the same time or all, all four sides at the same time. And all now I, now I only have to do is move this, um, my cursor to the left and let's give it some padding of 20 pixels on the top bottom and both sides. Let's preview it and it looks a bit bigger already, it has some more breathing room. Now the logo in itself still is a bit too much to the top. So let's just put that, push that down ever so slightly. In order to do so, I'm going to select the nav logo link and I'm going to give that some more padding here. So let's push that down maybe 10 pixels and that looks already better, maybe 20 pixels. Yeah, let's say 15 pixels. Okay, that looks pretty good already. Now the logo looks slightly too big. We can reduce the width to maybe 180 pixels and then if a slightly smaller logo fits in a bit better. Now these nav links, again, they look a bit small. I, I think the font 14 pixels it's a bit too small for these navigation links. We want to really want the user to find them, we really want to click on them. And so in order to make them stand out, let's give them a bit bigger font. In order to do so, I'm going to select this link, give it a class of nav link and just change the font size to 16 pixels. And all I now have to do is give this the same class and this the same class. Now the next step for our navigation bar is to add a button. If you take a look at the 
sketch we did, we said that we want to have a button in the right hand corner in order to get the user's attention and make them really click on get guide. Let's go about and doing that. I'm going to select the elements tab and going to select button. And all I have to do is drag and drop the button into the nav menu. There we go. Now the next step is styling that button. Luckily, we already prepared our button styling. So all I have to do now really is give the button its class name of button. And it looks exactly like we designed it in the style guide, even with the hover included. Now, previewing the whole navbar, we notice that there are two things which are out here. First of all, there's a lot more spacing between these two links and home and about and about and contact versus contact and the button. The second thing is that they are not on the same line. The button is pushed higher than the links. So let's change that. And in order to do that, in order to bring them first on the same line, I'm going to select the nav menu. Now nav menu is just a normal div element, which actually has no styling applied to it right now. So what we can do is we give it a name, a class name and apply stylings to it. So let's exactly do that. We're going to give it a class of nav menu. And then we go to display and select flex. With flex, we can control how all the nested elements are aligned. And here in the aligning section, all we now then have to do is select center. And now all the elements, these three links and the button are now aligned at the center of this nav menu. Okay. Now the next step is to quickly change the text actually. So we change that to get guide. And then the last thing is to make the, the space between the links equal. The reason why the space between the links is so uneven is because if you take a look at math links, you can see they all have a padding of 20 pixels. However, if you add two links together, that means the spacing between those two links is 40 pixels because this math link has, a, has also a padding of 20 pixels. So 20 from this plus 20 from that adds up to 40 pixels spacing. However, here contact, we only have one link, so only 20 pixels spacing. In order to do, in order to adjust that, all we have to do really is change the, the, the settings and remove these paddings. So I'm just going to set the paddings to zero in the math links and set that to zero as well. And instead of using padding, now I'm going to use margin in order to separate them. And I'm going to give them a right side margin of 20 pixels, maybe let's say maybe 30 pixels. And they look a bit, a lot better separated. The last thing, is that the font looks a bit too small in comparison to the button. So let's just give it a bit bigger font size. And then I think we should have a fairly good looking navigation bar like we planned it. So let's make the font 18 pixels and take a preview look again. And I think that looks quite good for the beginning. We can always go back and adjust that later. Now all the other links in here currently won't work because we only have one page. Let's go about and changing those links later. First, let's continue styling the rest of the page.